What is going on Guardians and welcome back to another Destiny gameplay video. In this video I wanted to address one of the things I get asked about the most and that's I get these questions like how did you survive that engagement? How did you how did you stay alive there? Uh, so I just wanted to share some of my secrets to survivability. Not that they're necessarily secrets but uh, just tactics in general that'll help keep you alive so that you can go on longer kill streaks. I'm going to show you first and foremost um, this 15 kill streak I went on without using any heavy ammo or anything. It's just all sound tactics. So here you'll see that our team is down. We kind of got steamrolled right off the bat. We're going against a party that's teamed up and we're a bunch of randos. So here I want to get the spark runner down obviously. Now I missed my second shot on this guy but look I got a sniper to my left, the spark runner to my left. But I want to play to the strengths of my class, or my uh, my build, my loadout. So I know that I've got battle recovery, or life support, on my hand cannon. So I switch to the hand cannon to get the kill, starts recovering my health, and then I duck into cover to limit this engagement so it's just me and the spark runner, and the sniper doesn't have a line on me anymore. So you have to be conscious of who can see you from what angle. So try and change the angle so that you can uh, limit the engagement so it's just you and who you want to be engaged with. So I do that all the time, I'll switch up to sight lines, I'll sidestep into specific parts of cover that are going to give me the ability to uh, not be seen by a specific opponent, uh, mainly snipers who, you know, can, can see you from other ends of the map. Uh, they can wreck you pretty quickly with just a single shot to the body. So now here, uh, I want to clear a path for our spark runner. I see that they're capturing, so I just want to pin these guys down, I clear three out, and then I'm moving up to uh, provide support to the uh, the spark runner, and I uh, get the guy off his back. Now this is a curious um, engagement here. Now I missed both of my shots and my throwing knives, so now I'm one v one. I have no ammo in my magazine, no special ammo, no throwing knives. So what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to drop back, and then instantly jump right back up as soon as the guy pursues, just to juke him out. So that way uh, I don't take damage. It kind of keeps him on his toes. And then that, that uh, trip mine actually primes the guy for my teammates. And I don't need the kill. I'm just going to back up, bring him to my teammates if he wants to pursue me. And he gets punished for it. My teammates wrap him up. I get a couple of assists out of the engagement instead of, uh, you know, taking a death. So it's all about kind of juking people, manipulating the sight lines and cover to your advantage. So when you're in those tight situations, a lot of people just freak out. Don't freak out. Just think about what's around you and how you can use it. So here, again, we want to, um, I want to score a point with the, the rift here. I want to ignite that rift. So I'm just going to try and uh, really buckle down one of these choke points, one of the main alleyways that they can make approaches into middle map because rift is all about mid-map control. I'm having a lot of fun playing rift right now just because there's so much chaos. You can get completely obliterated in rift really easily. There's uh, lots of supers, I mean it's a 6v6 playlist, and uh, you're going to run into lots of mobs. So I really like having to try and think on my feet to juggle all of these opponents simultaneously. So here again I want to get mid-map control, so I'm going to change up where I'm making my approach. I don't want to be the same spot uh, the, the entire time of the match because they're going to know where to come for me. Some guys will get frustrated enough that they'll take their rockets or their supers right to where you have been. So you kind of want to change it up a bit. And locking down these choke points is a huge, huge factor in winning matches because people always want to get mid-map control unless they're campers. And even then, uh, back in the spawns, there are places you can put grenades and equipment in order to, uh, you know, maximize your potential for victory. So one of the things that you have to remember is that grenades are a huge factor in winning matches. Uh, how well you can use those and when you use those. A lot of people waste their grenades because they just chuck them willy-nilly in moments where they don't really have the potential for maximum damage. Here I've got a guy primed. I don't want to close the gap on a, a warlock because they're you know monsters in close quarters. And then here, this is uh, all about making the right approach. I know there's a guy over here, so I'm just going to make a high approach over his firing line and use my throwing knives. So it's just using your equipment. This is a different engagement, but the same strategy. And so again, I, uh, I peek out, I miss my shot with the Queen Breaker, so I'm going to drop back. So I break line of sight, and then I make a different approach at a, a place that otherwise looks like it, there's only one way to make an approach. Now here, just remember, grenades are for choke points. They're for choke points, where they have a, uh, you know, a place where the opponent is forced to walk through a tight area so that your grenade can do maximum potential damage. So grenades are for choke points, remember that. Don't waste them. Here I get an Axion Bolt chasing me. 
and uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna start running. But these guys were gunning for me this match. This was a 40 kill match for me, and and they knew who I was. They uh, started teabagging and stuff. So they they pursue me, and this guy cuts me off. I want to hug this wall to my left and keep going straight. But another opponent is there, so I have to make a different cut. And look at the space in front of me. That's way too much space for me to, to get away. So instead, I got to turn and challenge. And again, grenades are for choke points. As soon as they pursue into this choke point, I toss that grenade and just kind of jump backwards to get out of its uh, area of effect. And sure enough, I get that double kill off of it. So again, grenades are for choke points. This is a choke point. It's a small area that they have to come through. So I'm going to chuck that grenade, and then I'm going to make the approach on the opposite side because I don't want to be on the same side as my grenade. I want to do maximum potential damage. So I get a double kill here because I shoot one guy, and another pursues in, and the grenade is able to clean him up. Here's a nice little triple kill. Shabab shabib. While I was uh, <laughs> uh, suppressed with a suppression grenade. But again, grenades are for choke points. I put one up at the top of the stairs. It's a small area. You can do maximum potential damage. And then I just come on the left and it pulls the guy into it because he's reading his radar. He gets tagged by it, has absolutely no health. It makes the uh, cleanup kill pretty easy to do. So just keep that in mind. What you do with your equipment is a big factor in surviving engagements and winning matches. You see me getting out of some pretty sticky situations here by using my equipment at the right time. Sometimes it's a Hail Mary, but uh, the more that you get used to using your equipment in these sort of uh, high high danger, you know, danger close sort of moments, the more you get used to using them, uh, the more accurate you're going to be placing your equipment, no matter what kind of equipment it is. If it's a smoke bomb, a wombo combo, if it's just a, a lightning grenade, or if it's an area of effect grenade, uh, a burn nade, whatever it may be. Um, yeah, the more you get used to using those, so I would suggest you play with one subclass for a, you know, a significant amount of time to really get a feel for it. Uh, one of the things that I do too often is switch up my subclass so I don't get a lot of chemistry. So um, I've been playing the, the Gunslinger a lot lately just because I'm really trying to get a solid feel for it because I've never spent a ton of time with the Gunslinger. It's just sort of been off and on. So here... Uh, this is another game of Rift. Like I said, I've been having a lot of fun in Rift. We are down, so we need to make a, a comeback here. So I'm going to push in to sort of the, the front of their spawn area because I want to pin them down, especially now that Heavy's coming up. But we're down, and you know what? It's time to pull out the Heavy Ammo. Uh, as much as I hate Heavy Ammo, it's a crucial part of winning 6v6 matches. And when my team is down, I'm not going to set them up for failure by being too stubborn to use it. So sometimes you just got to suck it up pick up that heavy ammo and, and go to town. So we want to rally a comeback here. I push in just to get a little bit of control. I jack their special ammo to deny it. Um, our riff, our spark runner pushes in a little bit too aggressively without his teammates and uh, gets killed before he can uh, score. But I'm still here so I'm like well you know what let's just manage the spawn point again. Keep mid map control because winning rift matches is all about having middle map control. You want the spark spawn control. And so we're just going to go to town here. I'm going to go on a nice kill streak. And uh, I'm just watching that scoreboard the whole time. Blade Dancer blinks in, but we get some team fires on him. Now it's time to pop my super. I'm going to end up getting a nice phantom medal here as, uh, as they're trying to defend their home base. Now that we pick up the spark, I want to clear him out of here, get the nice phantom there so that our spark runner can come in and score. But uh, surviving those engagements, going on these long kill streaks, sometimes heavy ammo is a part of doing that as much as I hate it, but I, I love that today we're getting those changes that there's only going to be one heavy ammo spawn. Dude, that's going to make me so happy because I've lost so many we ran out of metals uh, chances by uh, just taking a death to heavy ammo, and we actually clutched the, the comeback win there because of that heavy, but it's a necessary evil sometimes in sixes, but fortunately it's only going to spawn a once from now on, which is amazingly beautiful. So, uh, Super timing is a, is a big thing to make sure you're popping your super at the right times and uh, different supers have different strengths so play to the strengths of your super uh, the strengths of your subclass and uh, also the strengths of the weapon that you've got out the, the weapons that you have equipped so I like these uh, sort of long sight lines that slant across there and getting a couple of kills with the uh, last extremity and the uh, queen breakers bow and here I'm just gonna make the correct approach never assume that you've got a guy on the ropes if he's got no shield you still want to approach strategically, so I go high up over the boxes there. Now, I kind of drop back to see what my teammates are doing. They're getting uh, the spark, so we got some mid-map control. This guy gets tagged with my grenade, but now we're kind of dancing around. <laughs> and uh, managed to get the kill there. 
but uh, hopefully some of these tips have been helpful for you guys keeping in mind uh, you know the grenades are for choke points you can use them at other times too if you need to but for the most part save them for the the times where they have the maximum potential damage so keep in mind your loadout you saw me switch to my hand cannon not because it was the smartest play but because um, just because it had a uh, life support on it and I needed help so it's not that it had a an advantage over my special weapon in that situation it was just that I needed health and it could get the job done and give me health at the same time so that's what I switched to remember to limit sight lines guys when you get surrounded it's all about manipulating the sight lines so that fewer guys can see you like right here I sidestep to the left so that only one guy can see me and then I'm starting uh, starting to bait these guys back in and that's a big factor in winning matches too is um, when you push and then drop back and bait guys into pursuit and locking down see I'm looking at the garage door because I want to pull them through a tight spot and they didn't pursue that time but a lot of times they will so pulling guys here I'm gonna pull a guy um, I take a shot I miss and then I'm gonna get pursued here so I'm gonna chuck a grenade right onto those boxes as a guy pursues I baited him into a choke point where my grenade can do maximum potential damage and then here using my equipment again for the throwing knife kill so hopefully some of these tips are helpful guys hopefully you enjoyed the gameplay really looking forward to getting into the new meta of things as of today and I'll catch you guys in the crucible